Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. Today on my Patreon-supported YouTube channel about Old Norse language, myth, runes, etc., I'm going to give you something I normally don't do, which is a translation into Old Norse of a popular uh, work of English literature, specifically the Lydney Against Fear from Frank Herbert's Dune, both because over the years many people have actually requested it, including my assistant Stella, and uh, because, well, with the movie out, there's some renewed attention to it. It's actually pretty often quite difficult to translate into Old Norse. The, uh, the concepts, the grammar are quite different from those of uh, most English speakers today. But this works surprisingly well, and actually works pretty well as passable Old Norse Eddic poetry. So, let's see how well I can do this. Now I'm changing the language just a little bit here because uh, I actually do want to make it work as poetry in Old Norse. But sometimes the process of changing something to work in another language actually reveals something interesting about the original text too. Certainly I found that in uh, my favorite translation of Cyrano de Bergerac. I can never remember the author's name, unfortunately. Um, I always have to check it. And uh, in the process of my own translation work, translating Old Norse into English. Well, here we go. Ek skalat otask, oti hygr hugat bana, oti es litil ovinr, es uider mer olum. Ek mun horva vid, tvi es hredir mik. Ek mun lota ota lida, uverhovud gegnum hjarta. Og ek mun lita o leid sina, thos han es horvin. Ek o at sjo eki, ek ein livna en. Now, the original in English, of course, is I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Let me give you a quick word from my sponsor who helps make these videos possible, and then I'll explain how my translation Old Norse is a little bit different to fit Old Norse ways of wording things and also to work as Eddic poetry in Old Norse. <laughs> Now, of course, Old Norse poetry is alliterative. That means that you have words that start with the same sound. Now, any vowel can alliterate with any other vowel, and that's what I've done in the very first line. Ek skal at otas, so I, ek, is alliterating with otask, fear. So I must not fear, ek skal at otask. Fear cuts the mind to death. Oti hugar hug at bana, a more normal thing to say in Old Norse than to make a compound with a noun like killer. Fear is the little enemy, es lethal oven, which destroys me entirely, oither mer olum. Much more normal to talk about a concrete object in Old Norse than to talk about abstract ideas like obliteration. I will face that which frightens me, horva vithvi es rather make. I will let the fear pass, lota ota lida, over the head, through the heart. Often in Old Norse poetry, you won't have any kind of indication of you know, whose head, whose heart it is. Um, but it's also more normal to have a concrete object there than just, um, you know, the sort of abstract concept of like over me, through me, over my head, through my heart strikes me as a more natural way of putting this in Old Norse with a, a more concrete seeming object. 
and I will look at its path, Lita or Leithsina, when it is gone, Thos Han is Horvin. Of course, fear Oti is masculine, so you talk about it as he. I will I I will see nothing. Ek o atsio eki. Technically the modal verb that I'm using there is more like a, I have to see nothing, but modal verbs are kind of uh, exchangeable in a lot of old Norse poetry. I alone survive still, live still, so I alone remain. So in the total sense, a little bit different from Frank Herbert's English language original, uh, but in being made more concrete, I also kind of, uh, I like it, right? It's different, but uh, it works pretty well for me. It's even pretty memorable uh, thanks to the alliteration. It's maybe not um, not very typical for the, the basic Old Norse Eddic meter for Near the Sog, which tends to be more like narratives, right? The story of creation, the story of Ragnarok. But you do have something somewhat similar in uh, Skirner's uh, stanzas about courage in uh, the poem for Skirnes and the Poetic Edda. So it's not completely out of character for this meter to be used for, uh, you know, a somewhat gnomic, mantric uh, litany like this. Well, I hope that you uh, have some good use from that. Sometimes I feel a little bit like a circus bear when I translate into uh, Old Norse, you know, like I'm just doing tricks people think they want to see and then uh, they see it and it just kind of makes them feel sad. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe not this time. Well, for now, from remotest, beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.